While studying at Ohio State, George Steinbrenner served as a graduate assistant to Buckeye football coach Woody Hayes. The Buckeyes were undefeated national champions that year and won the Rose Bowl. Steinbrenner served as an assistant football coach at Northwestern University in 1955 and at Purdue University from 1956 to 1957. Steinbrenner joined Kinsman Marine Transit Company in 1957, the Great Lakes Shipping Company that his great-grandfather Henry had purchased in 1901 from the Minch Transit Company, which was owned by a family relation, and renamed. Steinbrenner worked hard to successfully revitalize the company, which was suffering hardship during difficult market conditions. In its return to profitability, Kinsman emphasized grain shipments over ore. A few years later, with the help of a loan from a New York bank, Steinbrenner purchased the company from his family. He later became part of a group that purchased the American Shipbuilding Company, and, in 1967, he became its chairman and chief executive officer. By 1972, the company's gross sales were more than $100 million annually. In 1960, against his father's wishes, Steinbrenner entered the sports franchise business for the first time with Basketball's Cleveland Pipers of the National Industrial Basketball League and IBL. Steinbrenner had hired John McClendon, who became the first African-American coach in professional basketball and persuaded Jerry Lucas to join his team instead of the rival National Basketball Association. The Pipers switched leagues to the new professional ABL in 1961. The new circuit was founded by Abe Saperstein, owner of the Harlem Globetrotters. The league and its teams experienced financial problems, and McClendon resigned in protest halfway through the season. However, the Pipers had won the first half of the split season. Steinbrenner replaced McClendon with former Boston Celtics star Bill Sharman, and the Pipers won the ABL championship in 1961-62. The ABL folded in December 1962, just months into its second season. Steinbrenner and his partners lost significant money on the venture, but Steinbrenner paid off all of his creditors and partners over the next few years. With his burgeoning sports aspirations put on hold, Steinbrenner turned his attention to the theater. His involvement with Broadway began with a short-lived 1967 play, The Ninety Day Mistress, in which he partnered with another rookie producer, James M. Nederlander. Whereas Nederlander threw himself into his family's business full-time, Steinbrenner invested in a mere half-dozen shows, including the 1974 Tony Award nominee for Best Musical, Seesaw, and the 1988 Peter Allen flop, Legs Diamond.